If you have a drawer pull, why not make a drawer push? So we're almost done with this. We've cut almost all the pieces in it. It's basically ready for assembly. We just have to do a few finishing touches on it. And in this video, I just wanna look at this drawer pull. There are a lot of ways of making drawer pulls and I'm not going to go into historical methods and uh, what they should look like and what they're shaped like. I really want this to be a video about experimentation and play around with it and find something that you like. There is no right and wrong. As long as you can grab it and you can open the drawer with it, that's all that you need for a drawer pole. And I want to kind of go into looking at turning this. We're going to be turning it on the spring pole lathe and having some fun with that. Um, I will leave a link to the build for the spring pole lathe down below. It is a fairly simple thing and a great chance to experiment, play around, have some fun, and create your own style, your own creativity. So uh, let's stop talking and dive into the work. Okay, this may look familiar. This is what I cut off of the legs. So it's about six inches or so long. And I'm going to turn this into the drawer pole. Now, for using the spring pole lathe, uh, it takes a lot of time to knock off these corners. And so what it's actually quicker to do is just round them off with a plane, bring it into like an octagonal shape, and then take it over. We're only going to be using a little bit of this to actually turn the pole itself. The rest of this will then be used for what the rope runs around to actually turn this. So first thing, let's put it in the vise and round off some of the corners. And I'm not being anything precise or careful on this. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take it off until it looks about right. Actually, put some pressure on that. Against the grain. And there we go. Roughly roundish, shush, something like that. I'm going to find center on this and then put some points in that. One of these days I need to actually make a center finding jig, uh, but until then this works fine. Just using a couple squares, one with a 45 on it. I'm going to keep, oop, that was off. Keep going around this until I find approximately where center is. And then I'm going to come in here with an awl and I'm going to put it right in that crosshair and push it down in. And then that will be the point at which the uh, live center, or yeah, the live center in this case, will rest into that. Do the same thing on the other end. We'll take it over to the lathe. So then to set this up, I'm gonna grab the rope. <laughs> so then to set this up, I'm gonna grab the rope. I'm gonna go around it two times, bring it down in here, and then put it between the centers on this. Give it a bit of tap of in place. Then I'm going to take up the slack on this until it's up about as high as it can go. So I'm just going to keep wrapping this around until I get up high. So I have more stride. The higher I can raise this, the better, the more pull I have. A little too high. One less. There we go. Now let's set this in. I like to leave this a little ways away so I can get my fingers between the work and that. It just makes me feel comfortable. Um, and because it's it's you know foot powered, I don't have to worry about the torque of catching. Whereas with a, with a powered one, I want to put this as close to the work as I can get it. And then I'm going to grab a roughing gouge. And a roughing gouge is basically just a really big gouge. And I want to create a, uh, a round spot on one end waiting until I get cuts all the way around. I still have a couple flat sides here to get into. So now I've gotten this fairly well round and that's going to be the diameter of the pole. What I basically want to do is create a little ball here and this will go down into a, into a valley and then I'll come back up to a flare. And then here, I'm gonna cut this all the way down to a one inch diameter dowel. And that dowel will then be fed into the front face of the drawer. So I'm gonna start back here up against what will be flush up against the drawer face. And I'm gonna be using a parting tool to slowly cut in until I get down to a one inch until I get down to a half inch diameter in the middle. Right now we're at 0.59. So I'm gonna leave it right there for right now and then we'll come back a little later because I'd rather leave it fat and then trim it all up where it needs to be. So now I know that this is the flush point um, right up against 
where the, the drawer will be spinning. Now I want to roll this in a little ways and actually create a bit of a gouge. So I'm gonna come in with a scraper and shape it down. Now, at this point, I have to say, white oak is not the favorite turning wood, uh, especially for something slow like a spring pole lathe. It's not that it's hard, it's just that it's so porous that it's very, very difficult to get a smooth surface. So we're gonna be doing a good bit of sanding on this, uh, but working things in there, hey, just get used to the, the fact that it's going to be a bit rough to begin with. So I'm trying to leave uh, between a quarter inch and an eighth inch here where it's round on the face. I'm going to be cleaning this up a little bit later, but for right now we're just going to be cutting in this flute. So here's where you get to start to be a little artistic and you can feel, you know, does that feel good to you? Do you want it to go a little deeper? Do you want it to be a different shape? And you can play around with what you want because this drawer pole can be anything you want at all. And uh, have a little bit of fun and be willing to experiment. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and make this just a bit bigger. So there, now I've gotten into about the shape I want. I'm going to use a very, very light touch on this. Very, very light touch and just like scratch the surface. Smooth it out a little bit. And there we got a fairly nice surface that's ready for sanding. So the next thing I want to do is actually turn this into a bit, basically a ball right up in the front down to a very tight corner here. I'll cut that off later and sand it once it's come off of this. So let's make uh, a ball on the end here. The last thing I'm going to use is a parting tool to come in here really close and kind of round out this end a little bit. I don't want to take it too much smaller than like three eighths of an inch. It's much smaller than that and I run the risk of breaking it because I have a whole lot of horizontal force in this with the spring pole. So now I've gotten the rough shape in. I actually want to come back and just kind of smooth it up a little bit. So I'm just going to lightly touch it with the scraper. Just smooth it out a little bit. Get more of the precise shape I'm looking for. Now at this point I'm looking at it and it's thinking, hmm, you know, it's looking a bit more like a doorknob than I want it to be. So I'm going to take this flute in a little bit smaller here, and I'm also going to flatten out this ball a little bit, make it a little bit, a little bit shorter. Yeah, that's more the look I'm looking for in that. Let's take this flute in a little bit farther. And I want to get a smaller diameter than this, so I actually have a pin turning set of carbides with a very small diameter, and this should work pretty well for this. So now, I need to take this all down to half inch, well three quarter inch away from the back of this. I want to take that all down to one half inch. For that, I'm going to bring in my square carbide, and that'll allow me to cut down to it a little bit easier. So then as I get close to what I'm wanting with about a half inch, I'm going to bring this in and check it again, 5.7, 5.6, 5.5. So I can keep going a little bit more until we get right down to just a little more than a half inch. And that should be pretty close. 5'3", five, 5'1". Five, I want to take it down to like 5'05". 5'01", 5'05". Perfect. So that is precisely what I want. Now before I take it off, I'm actually going to go through and sand it and shape it to what I want. Once I get it sanded to the point that it feels good, then we can cut this off. Now when cutting this off, I need to be very careful because this cord is going to want to yank it off. So I'm just going to... Whoo, like that. <laughs> now I've got this peg on here, I'll put this in the vise, cut that off, and clean up this whole piece. At this point, I want to come over here, use the saw, very nicely and cleanly cut it off. Should probably use a flush cut saw, but I forgot to do that, so oh well. And then I'm gonna come in with a card scraper and clean up this end grain. And in a moment, you won't ever know that there was ever think anything on there. And there we go, a drawer pull ready to be installed. So now I need to put this into this, and I want to put it center, center, center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure down, and we're just over three and a half inches. So half of that would be uh, just over one and three quarter. 
So I'm going to guess at center being like right here. I'm going to put a little nick there. And if I'm off by a little bit, that's not a problem because this has such a large shoulder, it will cover any issue I have that way. So that's center vertically. Now I want to go center horizontally. And center is 11, wow, 11 and a half dead on. So that's going to be uh, five and a half, uh, five and three quarter. So, hey, that wasn't too far off. So let's put this right there. So that's center, center. I'm going to drive it in a good ways. Next thing I need to do is drill a hole that matches this. So here I have a whole bunch of half inch bits. And these are all marked as half inch. But they're all going to be slightly different. This one is slightly under a half. This one is almost dead on half. This one is like 507. Uh, this one, I didn't actually measure that one, did I? Let's see what that one is. That one's almost dead on half. A little under. That one's wide at 5.2. Or 5.2. And that one is... That was pretty close, 507. So what I want to do is I want to grab a couple of these and drill the holes and see how they fit. Because I want this fit to be really nice. Now, I'm not just going to put it in there, but I'm also going to put a wedge in there to spread this out so it doesn't fall out. But I want it to be a fairly decent fit first. So here I took these three that my guess were the best, and this one, the screw on it is trash. I bought this one at Harbor Freight a while ago. I don't know why I still keep these, um, but it just it wouldn't go in. This one ends up being a little bit too large. You can see how it's sloppy in there. I don't want that. Then this one over here, oh yeah, now see that's what I'm looking for. Nice and tight, still slops, but once I put a wedge in the back of this and spread that out, this will go beautifully. So this is the bit I want to use. So I want to drill a nice and square hole, and I'm just going to eyeball a square. I could put up some squares and check against them, but not gonna. As long as I step back and look at it from this angle, and then look at it from this angle, I can usually get it close enough. That's all that matters. I'm going to go through until I find a point sticking through on the other side. Once I have that point sticking through on the other side, we can flip this over and then finish stuff from this side, just like that. So we can flip this over and test the knob. How well does it seat down on there? And oh yeah, see that's what I'm looking for. And there is the drawer pull for the front of this. I really like that. It's just, that makes me happy. So next thing we need to do is actually put a wedge in here. I'm gonna put this in here and very, very carefully cut right down the middle of it with a fairly thin kerf saw. So this is actually my dovetail saw. I don't need to go down all the way, just a little ways. Then when we put this in here, we want to make sure that that kerf is running vertically. I don't want to be spreading the wood this way because that might actually cause cracks. Spreading it this way isn't going to be a problem because all the grain runs this way. And there we can see how it's looking on the front. Just like that with the grain running vertical there. So now let's create a wedge and put it in there. So to get a wedge, I just got this scrap piece that is about a half inch wide. I've got another scrap down here that will catch it so when the splinters it drives into that rather than into the bench. Once I get it in place, I get a bunch of these like weird twisty curls that pop off like this. And those actually make fairly decent wedges. So now I've got this tiny little wedge made that I can fit in here. Just gotta wiggle it down in. And then very carefully and slowly tap it down. Oop, broke off. Oh well. So now we have a drawer pole that's in there solidly, and this is one piece that won't ever come off. The last thing I need to do is just plane that down smooth, and it's ready to assemble into the drawer. Down and smooth and pretty. There we go. Now I have a drawer pull on the front of the drawer. 
no glue needed. I hope you like this video. Uh, if you, a lot of people are going to be saying, wow, that looks horrible. I really don't like that. And uh, it doesn't matter because I like it. Uh, this is what I wanted it to be. And therefore, that is my drawer pull. And you can, you can express yourself in whatever way you want when you make your own. Uh, speaking of which, if you'd like to follow along with the build, I will have plans to this entire build. Uh, I'll leave a link to those down in the description. And you can follow along in paper as well as on the videos here and make your own and exp express yourself and create your own bits of creativity wherever you want to in uh, the piece. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can do a deeper dive into these builds and put more information into them. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about, about Patreon or help out with that, you can do so right down there. Also, if you want to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.